Hello everyone, my name is Nils, environment artist at CR Division, and welcome back to the next part of the tutorial. In this part, we'll be covering how to render our asset inside of USD Composer. If you don't have USD Composer yet, you can just download it from the link below. It is a free software and it produces some pretty sweet results. All you have to do is download the NVIDIA Omniverse Launcher and scroll down to the app section and download USD Composer. This is located in your library. Um, you can download any version you want. I'm using a older um, version called 2023.2.2, but of course you can do the latest release as well. Nothing will really change um, for settings or any anything we will be covering here. Um, so just use the newest version. Once you've opened up a USD Composer, you will be greeted with this screen. Could be a little bit different according to the version. And the first thing we want to do is change the preferences. So we want to go to Edit and go to Preferences. Then you'll see this check mark and it'll become visible in this little bar here. We want to scroll down to Capture Screenshot and we want to make sure Capture Only the 3D Viewport is checked. What this will do is only capture this window here, so our viewport and if we didn't have this checked it would screenshot the entire window and that's not what we want so if you want to save it somewhere else feel free to change the path as well some other things that you might want to change are the settings over here so you want to click this icon here the little sliders you want to go to viewport and set your render resolution um, rendering at 4k right now you have some presets as well if you um, keep it at 4K and you start importing assets and doing your lights, um, maybe the best thing you want to do is change the render scale to 50%, else the performance might get a little bit laggy. So just change it to a lower scale of um, render resolution. Next up, we have our render settings. I'm going to import a render setting that I have uh, made myself for a different project. Um, it will be downloadable in the description below. So just feel free to just copy it over and then you can click these three little lines here and load the settings. And then you can just click on the settings that you saved as a USD file. Once that's done, we want to just change it to RTX real time. Um, interactive mode is basically path racing. You can see it here iRay and Pixar Storm. We won't be using any of these two. We'll just be focusing on real time and path racing. But for now, feel free to keep it on real time so it doesn't have to process the um, samples right here. As you can see, it takes a little while and with real time, obviously it's real time, so you don't really have to do it. If you wanna change some settings yourself, um, feel free to just go ahead and change some render settings here. If you wanna change it for real time, make sure this is checked. For interactive or path racing, you just change it and you have the settings according to the renderer. Next up, we'll go to stage and we will check out what exactly we have in a fresh vanilla scene. So we will have a empty and an empty wood environment. We can expand it and we can see a sky, a distant light, some looks and a ground and a ground collider. We won't be using the ground and the ground collider, so we can delete it but first we might want to import our asset. So what I will be importing is our model, so what we made, and the dome or the backdrop that we made inside of your DCC software as well. So to import, you can just go to content or you can go to file and click import, and then you can just uh, navigate to where you saved your files. So I will go ahead and import everything that I will need. So my model and my backdrop. Once we've imported that, we can see that it is quite small and we don't need the ground and ground collider anymore. And we are left with the model 88. If you select the model, by the way, and you press F, it will focus on your model and you can kind of set the angle already. So what we want to do is go over some um, stuff here. So we have the sky. This is basically an HDRI. As you can see, there's already a texture file here. This is where you want to load up your HDRI. So again, just like we did in Marmoset, if you have an HDRI you want to use or one that you downloaded, feel free to navigate to this folder and browse your desired HDRI file and load it up yourself. Once that's loaded up, you can change some settings. You can change the brightness. You can use um, a color, so a color temperature and you can just change whatever you want to change, but we'll keep it at the default settings. We might not even use a sky dome 
Okay, cool. So we have a distant light. We don't really want a distant light right now since we're going to add our own light. So you can either make it invisible or you can delete it. So once you've imported all your models and they will be visible here in the outliner or the stage, um, they will be inside of a group or a folder and we will see our models here. So our model 88 low. And if we click the plus icon to expand it, we can see a look folder and all the separate bodies that we have and you can move them and select them just like you would in Marmoset as well. But something else that's um, different to USD Composer is the materials are called looks. And if you expand that, you'll have a little material sphere right here. You can just click on that one and you can see that you basically have a material just like in Marmoset. You can drag in your albedo, your roughness, metalness, etc. So you will want to go ahead and do that real quick. So if we go to albedo, we want to drag it in right here from our um, resources folder. So we just drag it into the corresponding slot. Albedo, you want to make sure it is set to sRGB. Then if we have a ORM texture, we can just enable it or you can um, import your roughness and metallic um, separately. But I have an ORM texture, so the roughness and material is packed inside of the one texture. Let's go ahead and import that. The only thing you want to do is change the metallic map influence to one and your roughness map influence to one as well. Next thing we want to do is add the AO. So we drag it into the AO map. You can have a opacity. So if you want opacity, you can just enable opacity and drag it in as well. All you have to do is enable the opacity texture. The normal map, you can just drag it in as well. So once your material for your model is set up, we can go ahead and change the model for the backdrop itself. So let's say you expand the backdrop and you only have a plane and no looks folder. You can always create your own look and either by creating your own folder called looks. And then you can just right click on the folder, create and go to material. In this case, you want a Omni PBR. If you want a PBR material, just click it and it'll create a folder called looks and the only PBR. After that, you just want to change it, maybe change it to M underscore backdrop to keep it consistent. And then you can apply the material right here. Just click on the backdrop and it'll have applied the M backdrop that we just created. Then you can change the color as well. You can see it will become brighter. You can change the roughness value yourself. Cool. After that, we might want to set up a camera angle to create a new camera. We can just go to the perspective camera here, click it, select the camera, and then you can either select a already existing camera if you have multiple, or you can create a new one from your view. Let's say you like this angle, you can create a new one. Then that camera will become active and inside of your camera, you will have some settings as well. You have your focal length, your focus distance, your f-stop, and there's a ton of settings. All you have to do is change the focal length real quick. So let's change this to 75 and zoom out on the model. Select a pretty cool angle. If you're happy with the camera angle, you can always click on the camera and hover over the icon. And if you click it, it will lock the camera. So if you try to move it, you can't. Now, if you like this angle and you want to start placing some lights or have a better overview, what you can do is go to window scroll down to viewport and select viewport number two. So having two viewports will give us a better overview if we want to start placing some lights. To add a light, you just right click on your viewport, go to create, go to light, and there's a number of different options, but we'll keep it at a rect light for now. If you click it, the rect light will spawn inside of the viewport. And if you press Z on your keyboard, it'll change the gizmo to the move and you can just move it around your model. Then you would have to set up a nice angle so you can rotate the light as well. You can rotate it around. Then you can also change the intensity, of course, um, the height and width of the rectangle. So let's decrease it a little bit in size. Get a tad bit smaller. And we can position it a bit down. You can play around with the lighting. I'll just do it pretty fast. Then if you want to add more lights to the um, scene, feel free to go ahead and add a couple more lights and I'll see you back then. 
So let's say you're pretty happy with your lights. I just added three rect lights. And one thing I did was change the orientation of the environment. So if you want to rotate your HDRI, you just click on the environment folder and rotate it around. So let's take a closer look at the uh, render we have right now. Of course, some parts are still a bit overexposed, but you can always change that by changing the settings on your lighting. So once you're happy with your lighting setup, you can close the second viewport again and go to real time or interactive. And one thing you want to do is it will render out the grid as well. And if there's any light icons available in the scene, it will render that out as well. So if you don't want to grid, you can disable grid and it won't show the grid anymore. Show by type, you can disable the lights and it won't show up in the viewport. Awesome. So you can either render this out in real time or you can just click on path tracing and we'll see that it'll start rendering and it'll do the amount of samples that you've um, set up. If you don't want that many samples, you can go to path tracing and click on total samples. I have it set to 1200, but you can always change it um, to a different number as well. So we'll be doing a render with real time and a render with path tracing so you can see the difference. So on the screen here, we will see the difference between real time and path racing. The left one is the real time render and the right side is the path traced render. Of course, this is still add half the resolution of our 4K render. So if you want to make the final renders, so just make sure you change the settings here to viewport and you go back to render scale and set it at a hundred percent. But for test renders, um, keeping it at a 50 is always great. So let's go back to the differences. As you can see on the path raised render, the shadows are way more sharp and accurate compared to the real time one. And even small details such as the front of the lens are a lot more clear and more realistic to how it would be in real life as well. So for me, the path raised render is a more um, accurate render compared to the real time one. So it's all up to personal preference. If you want to keep your renders 100% real time, just keep rendering at real time. But if you want to go for a bit more quality and realism, I would render at path traced renders just for your portfolio. It won't be real time, but um, at least they'll look pretty great. So we already did a couple of things. We already have one render. We know how to add lights. We know how to add cameras. We know how to add a model and change the material to it create new materials, change up the render settings. So let's go ahead and create a new camera. And we're going to go over some depth of field right now for some nice renders as well. So you can go ahead and click your camera, click on Ctrl D on your keyboard, it will duplicate the camera, or you can just right click and go to create and create a new camera from this list here. What we want to do is set up the active camera again and unlock it so we can move it around. Let's pick a pretty cool angle that we want to focus on. Let's say we want to focus on this part right here. We're going to camera zero one and we want to change the focus distance. Now changing the focus distance like this won't do anything. We want to set up the f-stop first. So you want to drag it to a level you are happy with. Of course, you can do everything according to um, real world camera settings, but I don't really have a ton of experience with cameras yet. So just um, pick an arbitrary number, whatever looks best. So once you've changed that, you will see that everything is out of focus. You want to change up the focus distance. If you click up the blue arrow, it'll change it to zero or to the default value. And then you can just click and drag until whatever it is, is kind of in focus. Now everything is in focus. That's also not what we want. So you want to decrease the value just a bit. What I like to do is keep it at a very low number so I can easily see what is in focus and what's not. So let's say this is kind of what we want, focusing on this part right here. Then we want to change up the f-stop just a bit and you will see that the other parts become blurry and this part will stay in focus. If you want to focus on a different angle, for example, this little boy here, you can go ahead and rotate your camera and then you would just change up your focus distance so it would bring this boy in focus right here. 
And that's how you get some interesting shots. Of course, you would spend a lot more time setting up your lights, setting up your camera angles. You can add mega scans to it. You can create other stuff that we saw from our references, such as the boxes. So if you spend some time on it, you will see that eventually you'll get a pretty nice result and um, it'll be a nice portfolio piece. So let me go ahead and open a project real quick to give you an example of what you can do with some simple lights and some simple settings if you spend a lot more time on it. So this is a scene I just created um, for rendering out some portfolio images. As you can see, I have a, quite a lot of cameras. And this is one of the cameras. I added some mega scans. I changed up some lighting, changed the HD array, added some boxes that I made uh, according to the reference and some dust around the images as well. Then you have some different camera angles that did the depth of field, for example, focusing on the boxes here, keeping this out of focus. Let's go to real time real quick. So it loads a little bit faster. So as you can see, if you spend a bit more time on your lights, on your camera angles, on your camera settings, and on your overall scene as well, it'll become a lot more interesting than just having your acid on a white plane or just having your acid float in a void, which uh, is very common in portfolio images. You would see just the acid floating around in a empty void, but just do some storytelling elements, add some boxes, add whatever is available on your reference, even an instruction manual that you've seen on the uh, reference images as well. Just spend some time on it, create some nice portfolio images, and we would love to see what you've created with Omniverse or Marmoset.